Hi, Amanda. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do before you take Max on a walk is put his prong collar on. It's gonna go first right under his ears around his neck. Hey, Maxie boy. Just like that. And then you're gonna spin it so that the rings are in between his ears on the top of his neck. And then you're gonna put the e-collar on. And that's gonna go in between the prong and the flap buckle. <laughs> there you are, Maxie. Tighten that up. After you get your e-collar where you want it and the placement, you're gonna attach the carabiner to the flat buckle collar. And then your leash is gonna attach to the small ring that spins right here. Right here, that's where your leash attaches, okay? All right, now you're ready for your walk. Make sure your e-collar is synced. You got your remote in your hand. Leash goes in your left hand, remote in your right hand. Let him take it out. So Max should be waiting nicely at the door. He should not be bolting out. Okay, let's go. Walk out your door. You're gonna be walking him on your left side. You're going to give him just enough, enough leash to where it's dangly right here, but not so much that he's got room to pull ahead or to the side or back. And the command is heel. So when you say heel, that's his cue to walk next to you at your pace, at your side with a loose leash. So notice when Josh changes directions, Max changes directions. This is the first time we've taken Max out since his board and train. We haven't done any work with him. So the dogs don't forget their training. They just need to be held accountable. Nice job. How does he feel? He's a little a little bit out of position here every now and then and I give him just a little bit of information on the e-collar and a little bit on the prong at this point but I imagine in a couple minutes here he's gonna he's already correcting himself so I mean he's very sensitive to the pressure so you only it's really only fingertip movements to, yeah. to on this prong here it's like literally I'm just moving it with my couple fingers here like this look yeah, Let's it's see. very light Good. pressure. There's never need, a need with him to go harder than gentle pressure at all. He's very sensitive to it. Very. So what number are you using on the remote collar? Right now, I think my fit's wrong, because I'm at a 10, and usually he's more sensitive if I remember correctly. But um, if I use this 10, I'll show you when he, next time he's out of position here. Tap there. He feels that, but it's not a consequence enough for him to prioritize not going out of position again. So what I'd want to do is go up, find a number that he's going to say, yeah, I feel that and I want to avoid that. So Amanda, don't be leery of going higher when you're outside on the walk. I know you told me you were using between one and five. You may have to go to 10 or 15 outside on the walk. I'm at a 20 right now. I'm going to see what it does next time he goes out of position. And that's a good way to do it. You like, you know, pick a number, watch the dog and then go from there. So that 20, he feels that. But I'm holding it right now. Puts himself back in position. But you can see, it's a good example of the environment will change the number. So 20, in your head, you might be thinking, wow, that's so high. But Max Max is telling Max us that's the number he right needs. Now. So every I'm time, actually going to a 30 now. Every time Max is out of position, you're going to tap the e-collar and guide him back. Okay? There we go. Yeah, so the, the mechanics are the same every time. It's tap at the corrective level and then guide them back into position. So it's tap and guide, tap and guide. And if you find yourself tapping and guiding like four or five, six times within 30 seconds, your number needs to be higher here. Yeah. 
So don't be, like I said, don't be afraid to go way up outside, especially Max is super excited. Um, your numbers are always gonna change. So if Max is manipulating you into thinking he's forgotten how to walk, yep. increase your numbers and tell him to heal. Make sure your leash length is correct. You got all your equipment on and this is the nice walk that you're gonna get. He's per he looks so yeah, perfect. He, um, he knows exactly what to do. He didn't forget this. He knew exactly what to do when Josh brought him outside. See him change directions and follow Josh every time Josh moves. That's it. See those little corrections I'm giving on the leash? I, I bet you probably can't even see them. But I'm literally taking these two fingers and I'm just going tap on the leash and it's enough for him. Yeah. Good boy. Nice. Right here. That's a, those are, that was a little pop. Probably the world's smallest. Small uh, little right there. Just, I just top with a with my strong collar for a small little guy. Nice job. You're walking very sweet. Walking very awesome. So Amanda, no barking is allowed from Max. Sit. You notice how quiet he's been with us? Um, you can interrupt the barking with higher numbers on the remote collar. It should just take once or twice. So Josh is checking the connection making sure we got a good connection because these numbers shouldn't for a guy for a guy like max i know him they're a little too high for for, for him while i'm thinking so i'm giving him the benefit of the doubt check my connection going back to the lower numbers and starting again thank you so what number are you at now three i'm gonna start at a three Ours, okay okay he feels it but it doesn't seem to be a consequence that's one thing that you got to remember amanda is at this point we're looking for a consequence not just what he feels there we go that was a seven so now I'm going to go, okay, seven's a consequence, but I'm going to go down to five because I don't want the head shaking if I can help it. That was a five? Now I'm going to stay there. All right. Because I still need it to be a consequence. Three's not a consequence. Seven was a little too high. I'm going to stay at the five. So that's how my brain works with it. Yeah. So Josh said, you know what? We're in the 20s and 30s for Max, which sometimes that may be the case for him. Yeah, sometimes. But I know Max and... I'm going to check the connection. I'm going to wiggle it a little bit, make sure we're in the right spot, make sure we've got a good connection, and I'm going to go down to lower numbers. I'm actually going to go to back to that three because I think you got more sensitive. Which and is also common. what can happen is if you're using higher numbers a couple times, yeah, that's he can become sensitive to it, and then you're able to go down to your lower numbers. Yep. So now the three seems to be working good. I'm getting the same effect as the five, so I'm choosing to use the three. So if he goes out, it's going to be tapped on the e-collar and guide with the guide with the, the leash here. I'm gonna show you again. Tap, guide. Good. Tap, guide. So you see how every time Josh Tap, taps? I went up higher because he keeps going out. Don't let him don't let him don't let that stop you if that happens, Amanda. That's protest. Because I keep asking him not to go out of position. What number was that? Five. That Same was a number. that was a five. So don't Same number. don't let Max manipulate you into feeling bad for him because he doesn't want to walk in this position. Yeah, he's frustrated, like because he wants to go out in front. So just me asking him over and over again to come back to the heel position, they can tend to, to, to do like little protest tantrums, and uh, Max is no exception. He, he knows. He knows how to throw a tantrum like no other. So, so if he okay. does that, I just wait it out and then ask him to heal again. So of course Max wants to be six feet ahead of Josh, but Josh is saying, you know what? I want you in the heel position because it's a much better walk for both of us, much more pleasant. And Max just said, I don't feel like it. And Josh said, too bad. And so and now, now, and now this no is what we have. And now that we got what we want now. So sometimes there will be. Yes, and it won't happen every walk. It, uh, the reason it's happening with me right now is because he hasn't seen me in a while. And so he's testing and he's going to do it with you. And if you allow that to result in him getting what he wants, you're going to get that fight every time he wants to do something and you're disagreeing. So let him do his little temper tantrum and re request that he goes, or um, make sure he goes back in the heel. Hold him accountable. He knows Hold this command. So now he's walking really nice because he, he realized the fight doesn't work. Okay, it's not worth it. And he just goes to heel. You don't have to freak out. You don't have to do anything. You don't even have to correct him while he's doing that. Just let him. Just wait it out. Let him do it. Let him do his little tantrum like a two-year-old. When he's done, it's like, okay, you're done. Back to heel. All right? So, I don't know. When did we last see Max? It was 
May. Been a long time, yeah. So we haven't seen Max in a couple months. We just took him out on his first heel walk. Little objection, but he knows what to do. And we're back in heel. Now let's see what he does. Good. Much better choice. So watch him following Josh's leg. Knows exactly what to do. That's much there better. we go, so Max. So we made progress, and, and this is often the case, is we make progress after um, after the temper tantrum is when you make the progress, is when you see them giving you the good stuff. So I think why why a lot of folks fail is they see the temper tantrum and then they, they that persuades them. And giving up looks like this. Okay, you can do what you want. So you rewarded a temper tantrum. You do that for a year and you're going to have yourself a monster. So... Um, don't reward it. Let him do it and then be like that doesn't get you out. All it is is him trying to escape the command. I want I'd rather have free time. So he's he's trying to get out of the you know homework or whatever at school. So if you allow that temper tantrum to do that, you're gonna see more of it. If you don't allow him to get out of it through that temper tantrum, it's just a waste of energy on his part. And he's he's gonna realize it doesn't work and he's gonna stop doing it because dogs do not do things that don't work for them. They only they only try actions that they believe is go are going to work for them. See how nicely he's walking? He checked himself there. Yeah. So that's normally where I would tap, and I have been on this walk. Now we got Max checking in with himself, holding himself accountable, and that's when you know you made the good stuff. But, you know, sometimes you just can't get that level of, of like, good decisions without going to the sloppiness of him throwing temper tantrums. So for me, when I see a dog throw a temper tantrum like that, I'm like, yes, we're almost there. It's an opportunity. To get to the Heel. awesome walk that we know he can that's do. A good boy. So he's doing very well. Three is the number that's working for me out here. Um, so I'm, I'm using that right now. But awesome. for you, again, watch Max. Watch make, how he reacts to it. Make sure you have a good connection. And whatever number he is responding to is what you use. I mean, it could be anywhere from 1 to 30. We don't know. It depends on the situation. It depends on, on a, a bunch of different variables. So. Good. So actually, see that? So now, he's so sensitive and he's so in tune with me, I'm getting away with that one. So now, Amanda, we're using a one. So, nice job, And Max. that's because he's being so compliant. So And he's so, and he's so with, much with me. So that one's more like, like that's the objection right there. He put himself... He wanted there. to go back inside. This is, that's common. <laughs> that happens with a lot of the dogs. So he wanted yeah. to go that way? So just so you know, I haven't corrected him for either of those. That is, I haven't touched the button. That's just him. Wanting Wanted to go, go a different direction. Exactly. So that's important for you to understand is I didn't touch him for anything. I didn't tap the button or anything. He's just saying, it's like the kid in the candy store saying, I want a candy bar. So Amanda, the, the important thing is, is if you let Max think that by screaming, it's going to get him out of something, he wins. You've got to work through it. I still haven't corrected him and now he's in heel because he's just realizing it doesn't work. That's the beauty of the prong collar too. If he goes both in that way, he's going to self-correct, which he did. Mm. So, um, so now look how great he's walking. So every time he gets smaller. I know. I he's know, so right? tiny. He's like three pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so every time we have one of these little moments, he's getting better and better. Watch it, Oh, sorry. He's getting better and better. And this is just, you know, this is within the first 10 minutes nice here. Nice choice, Max. So if you do this every day, those fights aren't going to be, I want to stress that that's not going to be an everyday thing. That's going to be like day one, day two, and then it's done yeah. if you do it right. Awesome. Um, yeah. All right, Amanda, I hope this helps. Okay. He knows his heel command. You just got to enforce it with him.